so in these two problems we need to find the elastic deformation energy when you twist a rod and when you it's given that you twist it by an angle phi so when we twist obviously we use some use some torque and that torque is proportional to phi that we saw in problem 1.305 part b that when you twist a rod the torque comes to be proportional to phi and this is the constant so if torque is proportional to phi let's write it in general form so this is of course the external torque so if because it is twisted slowly the internal torque is minus c phi so let's say this whole thing is c so the energy stored is negative of internal torque into d phi so if you put that internal torque as minus c phi what you get and then you integrate you get u is equal to c phi d phi and as you twist it from 0 to phi the energy stored will be c phi square by 2 so now uh, that's what we are going to do so this is the formula which we derived in 1.305 where we saw that if you twist a rod by an angle phi this is the torque which is needed so in this formula g is shear modulus so you can see the energy stored will be simply c phi square by 2 so this term is c so we put that and get our answer now in second part not second part 1.313 we need to find how the volume density of elastic deformation energy is distributed depending on a distance r if again it is twisted by phi so again we have the solid rod which is twisted by an angle phi we need to find if you go at a distance r and you you take, take this volume of the cylindrical shell so what can you comment about the energy stored per unit volume of this part alone this shell alone which is at its distance r so one thing is quite obvious that as you go away the energy stored is going to be higher and higher because you can see that the material is being twisted more and more as you move away so that's why the elastic energy stored is not a constant See here also we got the result in terms of r power 4 and this was the total energy. So you can see the energy is a function of r. So it's not a constant. It's just not it's not that the if length is known and phi is known then it should be independent of r. Nothing like that. So it is a function of r. So here also he's asking as a function of r how is elastic potential energy changing? So we are going to use this formula because u is a, u as a function of r we know so we'll differentiate this to get du by dr so we get a relation between u as a function of r and then we need a function of du by dv so that's what we'll do so first we'll do du by dr we'll get this so we differentiate this we'll get this so we'll take dr that side so du becomes this this thing and what we know is du by dv and dv for the cylindrical shell is 2 pi r dr into l so we put that value here and the value of du we put here so we get the value of du by dv which comes to be 6 phi square r square by 2 l square and as we predicted that's proportional to r square okay we did not predict that it will be function of square but we definitely predicted that as you move away the elastic energy stored per unit volume is going to increase with the radius so if you take the same volume here and if you take the same volume here here more energy will be stored or in other words if you take a bigger radius rod it will be more difficult to twist than if you take a smaller radius rod all right